Good morning, church. On this 4th of July weekend, as we're celebrating the, the birthday of this great country, I welcome you here to worship with us from your homes on this special day. The song, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, was written by Isaac Watts, taken from Psalm 90, said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place for generations, for all generations, and I pray for the generations to come. Let's sing together.
we continue through the holiday weekend, worshiping here today on Sunday and the holiday tomorrow, Monday following. Lord, I bring our country before you for all that is happening in our land. The left versus the right, all of the unrest in our nation, for those out there that would take advantage of our nation and the criminal acts, though they are in the minority, Lord, they are wreaking havoc in our country. But I believe America still has a special place in your hand and in your workings for this world, not just this country. And Lord, as uh, we are dealing with the COVID-19, as we're dealing with all of these other issues, brother against brother, Lord, I bring our land before you. More than ever, we need to be saying from the bottom of our hearts, in God we trust. Not in our politicians, left or right, not uh, in the, the leaders necessarily of, at national level, local level, and uh, state level. But Lord, we need to look to you, all of us, all of our brothers and sisters, and go back to the motto, in God we trust. So Lord, in the midst of all of this turmoil in our land, from the COVID-19, and the unrest, I simply and humbly bring it all before you. For all of the factions in our country, for all of their axes to grind, right or wrong, against their brother and against the nation, I bring it all before you. Lord, <clears throat> raise up peacemakers, both at a national level, state level, and grassroots, right down here to our west Palm Beach area in this county. Lord, raise up peacemakers, not just peacekeepers. And may your name and your power be found in this land. Amen. Amen. As we continue to sing the next song written by Martin Luther, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Fortresses were built around cities to protect them from their enemy. We see homes now, today, that sometimes seem like a fortress because there's no way in, gated. But we can have that protection around our hearts and around our lives with God as our fortress, our help in time of need. Let's sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Happy birthday, America. This is our 244th birthday. Going to be a lot of memories and tied up with this one and with all that's happening in our land with the uh, COVID-19 nationally and even uh, at uh, full strength here in this uh, community of uh, Palm Beach, all of the unrest in our land, all of the left versus the right in our land, and the, uh, the involvement of the anarchists within our land. This has been a hard weekend all the way around for everyone, but happy birthday, in spite of it all, America. God bless you. We are a land of the free. We think in terms of historical aspects. We are a young country in terms of thinking of uh, Egypt and China, Japan, Greece, and other countries around the world. But in many ways, we are the most free. Happy birthday, America. Thinking in terms of our spiritual heritage, rich as it is, is um, continuing down to today. The uh, song, My Country, Tis of Thee, was written by a Baptist minister. The Pledge of Allegiance was written by another Baptist minister. The words, In God We Trust, are traced back to the efforts of a uh, Reverend uh, Watkinson. And Reverend John Witherspoon, a Presbyterian minister, was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Doing my history and uh, my homework, I don't think there were any pastors there from the uh, Church of the Nazarene. But happy birthday, America. Though we're only a young country, we realize our history has only encompassed some five generations. When Thomas Jefferson died, Abraham Lincoln was a young man of 17. When Lincoln was assassinated, Woodrow Wilson was only a boy of eight. By the time the nation mourned the death of President Wilson, Ronald Reagan was a boy of 12. And here we are up to today in 2020. Even though our history is short, God has richly blessed us. Yes, we are the richest nation in the world. Happy birthday, America. Thinking of our history, we began by breaking free from the, uh, the British. We survived a civil war that nearly destroyed the country fought and won against two foreign enemies on soil that was not our own in Europe, stood up against aggression in Korea and Vietnam, and we were heavily involved in the, uh, the Middle East crisis going back some 20 years ago. But happy birthday, America. You are great because you are good. You are great because God has blessed you. You are great because you are the most generous of all the nations in the world, giving billions in aid to third world countries and helping them in many ways that other countries around the world with resources have not done. You are great because you allow people the freedom to worship as we do here in America. You are great and helping the little guys and the nations around the world against the bullies of the world. Happy birthday, America. You've learned that greatness is not measured in silver and gold and rivers and forests or in bombs and missiles. It's in the inner qualities found in our hearts and souls that we possess. Happy birthday, America. The lady in New York Harbor, Stanley Prouds, with her flame lifted up for all to see a gift from France. She still inspires even those of us that were born here in America. Happy birthday, America. Your flag waves proudly in the air, a symbol of all that makes you great, whether at a ball game, a political rally, a concert, or here in our worship service. Happy birthday, America. In God we trust. As we have celebrated Independence Day yesterday, 
I trust for many of us and most of us, if not all of us, it actually was a good day for us. And I want to take a few moments to look at scripture, at how that this ties in with our uh, Independence Day and Independence Weekend celebrations. It's found in Psalm 23. And I want to share with you some principles that we would do well to observe if we are to keep asking and needing and expecting God's blessings to be upon us. As I read Psalm 33, I'll read it in such a way that it'll be easy to, and slowly, that it'll be easy to follow along with me. And may God's word touch your heart this morning. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with harp. Make the music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all that he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The Lord is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, he creates the heavens, their starry, ho starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the seas into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he, place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those who hope in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. May God's work, word, touch our hearts this morning. And the word fear in the Bible means to tremble. And to tremble in terms of the thought of being punished by God for our sins, to tremble at the sight of the mighty acts of God, to tremble with joy that people are coming to know the Lord and are being saved. Our nation is in desperate need of God. Our nation's in desperate need of respect and more reverence for God. Proverbs 15, 16 says, Better is a little with fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble. Today in our culture in America, we've crossed the line from disrespect for each other disrespect and outright blasphemy towards God. Who is this God that we as Christians, as Americans, trust in? The Bible says that he is holy. In Hebrew, it's El Shaddai, the Almighty One. In Greek, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of the universe, the everlasting Father. History tells us that when um, Europeans first came to America, that uh, the native Indians, yes, they had their gods, but they had great respect for them and had no curse words involving their gods. They learned that from the British and the French, how to curse in God's name. The Hebrews would not even pronounce the name of God, but 
In our culture today, it's common for folks to drag God's name through the mud. And that term, oh my God, is everywhere. I did see a, a, a pretty good TV series recently in which there was a, an individual of, of great moral character using that word, oh my God, all the time, whether in a positive or in a negative way. It's part and parcel of our culture today. But in reverence for God, it is return our nation to him. If we plan to trust and hope and plan, it, all of this will start with us, with the Christians, bringing God back in to everyday aspects of our country. The second principle is... Uh, the motto of our country, as found on our money, our coins, in God we trust. I talked about that a, a few weeks ago. To trust in God, not in ourselves, not in our own achievements, not in our government, but in God alone. In America these days, we have two formidable enemies we're dealing with. One is the external. There are countries in uh, the world that would wish to do us harm. And the other one is internal. Some would uh, say, well, our country is falling apart. When we look at the violent crime we have, the divorce rates, the uh, teen pregnancies, we have the highest in the industrial world, abortions, illegal drug use. You hear a lot of professionals and experts out there talking in terms of how to deal with all of our problems by using science and technology. But I would counter that. These are spiritual issues. Yes, use science, use our smarts, use our education to deal with them, but our philosophy should be coming from a spiritual perspective first. And the last principle I want to share with you is found in uh, 18, 20, and 22. Giving the nation hope. The word hope means to cast one's cares on another. Not just on a family member, not just on your spouse, but to bring it all before God. To throw ourselves on his unfailing love. Many of our nation's problems today are, can be traced back to a lack of hope. People turn to all kinds of mischievous and uh, carnal and criminal aspects when they don't have any hope. They don't see any way out in this life. Our depressed folks turn to drugs and alcohol because they have no one or no thing to turn to. They have no hope. But think about this. The Bible is a book of hope. The gospel is good news. Psalm 43, 5. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hope is the oxygen of the soul. Its object is in God alone and his unfailing love for us. Happy birthday, America. The candles of your birthday cake ring out freedom still in the world. Happy birthday, America. May all of our hundreds of thousands of churches on this day point towards God and all the spiritual aspects that our country needs today to become whole. Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday. May your citizens forsake the, the independent spirit that has made uh, an image and a reputation throughout the world. But may we take that and look towards God Almighty for the inner freedom that only he can give. Happy birthday, America. May your motto on your coin and your dollars in God we trust, be forever emblazoned, not just on the money, but on our hearts and lives. Happy birthday, America, and may God bless 
America. The holiday, but Lord, may the nation, may the individuals from all over the world that have come to America and call it home, may they think and take stock of what where, where we've been, where we are, and where we hope to go. And Lord, in all of this, may your name be praised, and God bless America. Go in peace and stay safe.